Welcome back to the back nine of round one feature card coverage of the team's event at the Collegiate National Disc Golf Championships. I'm Pavo Stubstad with Central Coast Disc Golf, joined once again by John Baker, TD of this event and director of college disc golf. Thanks for having me, Pavo. On the front nine, we saw Emporia State shoot almost the perfect nine holes. They were eight down through eight and just barely missed their birdie putt on hole nine. And uh, we're looking at North Carolina State as well. I believe they were five down through the front nine. Yeah, they came back from that early bogey and have rattled off a few solid holes, but Emporia's start was absolutely fire. They have ripped a couple birdies off to start and it's been impressive to watch. And now we'll see a little feature on North Carolina State. Yeah, this is my second year here. First time in D1, pretty exciting. I definitely love the individual part of the sport. That's what really what got me into it at the start. But once you really find your group of guys or you're going week in, week out, going to tournaments with your crew, it's really creates a bond. And that's part of the reason why I love it now. We put in a lot of work, especially this semester. We had four tournaments in a row and it was just back to back to back, battling all the classes on top of making all this happen and practice and make sure you're staying on top of everything. It's, it's not easy, but uh, we're here and the work paid off. Could be rainy. Last year on the final round, it was snowing. So definitely been thinking about that for the last year. And every single round that we've had in the rain so far this year, we've been gaining strokes. And I think that's really shows our endurance. This is not Carolina golf though. This is wide open golf course. We're used to the tight lines, tight woods. We got five teams out here. We have one in the D1 division, one in the D2, and then we got three into D3. Yeah, our club's pretty deep, so we're, we're happy that we can bring this many people out. It's just confidence for me. You know, I don't really feel the nerves for coming in with the number one spot. It just makes me want to play even better. It's always cool to see those little featurettes, get to know the players a little better. And I got to say, I'm not surprised that uh, North Carolina players feel more comfortable in the rain than most other players in the country. It rains a lot out here. Yeah, it does. Rain in the woods for North Carolina. And there we see our scores from the front nine, that almost perfect start for Emporia as we move on to hole 10, a 606 foot par four. Yeah, this is another hole that's been changed this year. Um, it used to play much tighter on the green or on the bunkers you see there, but there's a little bit more room this year and we've extended the hole a bit, a good bit further. Right. So we have those two hazard bunkers there. The drone is flying over. Now you see that OB line on the right as well. So you can actually be on dirt and still be OB there. You don't have to reach the Creek to be OB and the OB line is real tight up by the green as is tradition. Up first, Justin Farrell from Emporia State, going with the forehand. That flipped a little more than he intended, but that's way out there, well safe of the bunkers. Should give his teammate, Grant Yoder, green light to uh, be a little more aggressive and flirt with the bunkers a little bit more because that does get you closer to the green. And he avoids the bunker. But that angle might be tricky. They might actually opt to go with the, the first drive there. Yeah, they might. It's going to be tricky approaching that green from that far. Gus Jones throwing a nice forehand out there just short of the first bunker. It's a decent position. Zach Guess is their highest rated individual player, so I would assume he'd be attacking it here. Oof. Oh, man. It looks like he was going for the roller. He definitely was trying to attack. Just uh, clipped that cabbage on the left there, dangling off of that tree. That's too bad. Steven Trainer, big power forehand upshot. That was smooth, Pavo. A little bit too straight. It's tough to see what they'll be looking at from there, but I'm guessing Liam would like to put it closer than that. A little more hyzer on this forehand. That's looking good. Can it stop before the OB? Ooh, the chains almost stopped that one. And I guess that is safe, yeah. He wasn't sure. I think he waited for a signal from a spotter there, but that is inbounds. 
Alexis Chaparro up next. My apologies, Alexis, if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Oh, and I believe that rolled into the OB area, didn't it? I think so too, yeah. Bob. It looked like it trickled right past the line. And that one did not go OB, but that's that's a pretty long putt. Scary putt. Yeah, Cade was definitely playing that one safe. You gotta be a little you get a little nervous after you see your teammate roll OB. Ooh, good bid. That did stay safe. I think Grant is running up to check right now if it stayed safe to make his decision. Looks like we've got Peter back there helping him out. Yep. It is safe, but uh, it kind of went down an embankment, and they were looking at an awkward, like, 25-foot uphill putt, so Grant opts to just lay up and guarantee the par. Yeah, way to take your medicine on this one. I know that's got to be hard for Emporia State after that tear they were on on the front nine. Great putt there. North Carolina State getting a stroke on Emporia. That is a tough thing to do, apparently. It has been. After those putts that Emporia hit in round one, uh, that was a way, great way to capitalize by NC State. And Alexis taps in the par, only Emporia's second par of the round. And they just happen to be back-to-back, -back, huh, Pavo? Yeah. Eight birdies in a row, two pars in a row. Let's see if they can get back on the birdie train after this as we take another look at this great putt here. Beautiful. All right, here we have hole 11. It's one of the shorter holes on this course, but definitely don't get fooled by the tricky uh, drive there. Um, there are some beautiful elevation, uh, beautiful elevation changes in play on this course, and it's definitely gonna come into play on this green. Yeah, that's right. As you see, it slopes left to right with a with kind of an indent down there to the right of the basket. You could hit basket and roll away on a putt. It's tough to stick a drive near it. And then off the tee, you have this obvious choice. Once again, backhand to the right or forehand to the left. That's looking good. Perfect shot. That looked like an ace run from the tee. Seeing it now from catch cam, it wasn't quite, but it was a park job. Great drive. Oof. Well, good thing his teammate parked it. <laughs> Seems like those two trees are right in the line you'd like to throw. No, those they're what make the hole interesting. This hole might be kind of boring without those, so I'm, I'm glad they're there. Alexis going for the hyzer line on the right. Backhand hyzer, I should say. I guess both lines are hyzer. Looks like the wind got on the flight plate and dropped that down. Oh, yeah. what a nice roll, though. A little curl action towards the basket. Yep. Give him a nice little uphill putt. Yeah. Cade hanging his a little higher and a little wider. Yeah, a little too high. That's a little short. Probably still in the circle, but I'm guessing they'll, they'll go with the other drive there. Yep, here they are. Yeah. Grant making easy work of that one. That looked pretty automatic for Grant, and I guess that's how you win three regionals or three qualifying events and during the college disc golf season. You gotta hit putts like that. And a couple birdies from both teams, as would be expected on a short hole like that. So we get a close look of Steven's form here. Good follow through. And moving on to hole 12, uh, John, they changed this one this year. Yeah, this one's been one of the more significant changes we've seen on the course. Uh, last year was tucked in a cubby to the right. And this year they've really used the golf green, the ball golf uh, tee pad, excuse me, to really frame up a nice OB rectangle here that uh, almost creates an island-like feel. Yeah, I think it basically is an island hole, right? You got to land in this grassy area here to the right of the path. The steep hillside you see on the right is out of bounds. To the left of the path is out of bounds. And the path itself is also out of bounds, I believe. Yeah, Pavo, you're absolutely correct. They're actually teeing off um, from a small inbound section, but then they definitely have to carry the OB and land safer on the island. 
And there we saw one go OB. Let's see if Zach can help them avoid the drop zone. And that's right there on the island. Drop zone avoided. And I think we even saw Emac out there giving the safe symbol spotting for the opposing team. That's good sportsmanship. We like to see it on the collegiate events. Highest rated spotter in the world. <laughs> Perfect park job right there from Grant. Emporia State is looking absolutely dialed right now. Oh, there it goes. Ah, that's too high. My gut says he was giving that a bit of a run, Pavo. What do you think? Yeah, must have been since the other one was parked. Why not? Steven with about a 35-footer maybe? Oh, just a bit low. You can tell it was dead center by the way it reacted off that pole, though. Let's see if Liam can hit another big putt. If you remember on hole seven, he cashed that one. Ooh, good change. It's a good putter. It's got to be the Nate Sexton disc flip. Just powers up the putter. Doesn't know to go anywhere but the basket. I think you're right about that one, Pavo. He's getting good vibes there. Get some knucks from the teammates as Cade taps in the birdie. Yeah, NC State's had a lot of experience this season. They've competed in seven events and won five of those. So we can definitely anticipate that they're going to put on a tough battle with Emporia State. Another look at Liam's putt. Ooh, that barely held on. At least it was strong side. Good basket, good yeah, basket. Yeah, got to thank those Innova disc catchers. As we move on to hole 13, uh, possibly the shortest hole on the course would be my guess, right? I believe you're correct about that. And uh, the, the drive is very tricky because you absolutely have no idea where this basket is. You were down in a, a valley there and you have to clear this initial hill um, before you can even get eyes on that basket. Yeah, it's a interesting hole for being only 225. Like you said, totally blind off the tee. And then the green is very protected on, on most sides by trees, you know, not just in the circle, but within 10 feet. That's kind of the line right there. Oh, I guess we're going to see where that ended up. Maybe our catch cam missed that one. Mm -hmm. Damn, a little deep there. Yeah, a little spicy. Sometimes when you're playing the team round, especially on camera early on in this uh, level of event, you can get a little pumped up and amped up. And I think we've seen a few turnovers and long shots, and it might be because of the, the pressure they're feeling. Alexis going for that higher spikier line, and that's perfect. That's kind of all you want on this hole is just spike a gator or a zone or some kind of overstable mid down there. Yeah, you know Emacs had him out here practicing. That looked absolutely dialed in for Alexis. I guess they're probably throwing DD, so I shouldn't be throwing out Innova and Discraft names, but hey, you know, overstable mid is the point. Ooh, great tree play there. Yeah. Sit down now. There we go. so that must be where the first drive ended up where we didn't get the catch cam angle yeah and, pavo must yeah. have they've been getting a lot of tray action today let's that one didn't go their way but uh let's see if zach can nail this one for him oh man that was a lot of chain but a little high in uh left weak side so yeah. it didn't get the best stick on that one as you can see, they were dealing with some right to left wind there too, which I'm sure played a factor in that putt not dropping. Yeah, great observation there, Pavo. This course can, uh, if it's calm, it's one thing, but if it gets the wind blowing, it's abs it gets some absolute teeth.
And we're back on hole 14, a downhill 612 foot par four. Yeah, it's 612 feet, but we've actually seen an ace on this hole last year. Yes, yes, Pavo, that's correct. Wow, I was getting ready to shout out Robert Burridge for getting the eagle last year, but I guess uh, an ace, ace betros? That, that trumps anything. That's incredible. Who got it? Oh, wow. I, I would hate to say the wrong name. I'm not sure, but it was not a collegian event out here, but we definitely saw it. It's on video. It's been rung up. That's incredible, John. I got to look that up after we're done commentating here. Yeah, definitely do a quick search and check that one out. Yeah, that one's a bit turned over, but this is a very soft par four. So you got to imagine regardless of the drive, they're still going to have a chance at birdie. Oh, that looks like a great shot. It's going to hyzer back right in the line with the basket. Easy approach. Yep. Good shot from Justin there. Gus Jones. Oh, it looks like that turned over way too much. Cut roll a little bit. No. Yeah, on a beautiful shot like this, you really want to rip into it and give it all you got, but I think we see that pretty often, a bit of a turnover there, a little bit too much juice. And Zach turned it over too much as well. At least this one has more height under it, so he's going to get good distance, but they're going to be left with kind of a long upshot from either of those lies. Yeah, there's some meat on that bone, and this green is actually a little trickier than it looks. There's a couple nodules there that uh, can create some uh, tough landing uh, potential there. Tricky greens are the theme out here, whether it's OB Creek nearby or elevated basket placement with rollaway potential. I like it. More foreshadowing. Unintentional, I swear, folks. <laughs> I don't know, Pavo. You're a great commentator, cameraman, and now I think you're a psychic as well. Apparently. Either that or I was a cameraman and saw it happen already. But hey, I'm not trying to foreshadow. I don't remember every shot. And here's Liam. Keeping it nice and low. Can that stable up and get some fade? No. Ooh. Cade giving that a bid. Stays close. Gives Alexis the green light. Maybe try to run it for Eagle here. And he certainly tried. That was a good run. Yeah, that was a great run there, Pavo. Emporia State's coming off an impressive win at the Midwest Qualifier uh, at the farm in Quell Valley. That was a great event ran by Tyson Jones, and they had another great performance then coming off a hot win. Oh, just off right side there. <clears throat> One more chance here for North Carolina to get the birdie. Oh, just low. They've had a lot of cage today, Pavo. Yeah, that's too bad. These North Carolina boys don't know how to putt in the open. They need some trees to frame up the putts. Hey, I mean, that, I know that's definitely true for me. I have a harder time putting in an open field than, than a, on a wooded course. For some reason, it's obviously mental, but there's something to that. Yeah, I understand that. I know one thing I struggle with is distance here, too, in the open. You, you almost have to rely on your range finder on this course because there's not many points of reference. Yep. Another birdie for Emporia State. As we take one more look here at Justin's drive. Fantastic form, good follow through as he watches that disc sail. On to hole 15. Two hundred ninety-four foot par three. And uh, the path here and the grass in between it, everything is safe. This is actually one of the few holes on the course with no OB. Yep, and you'll actually see a couple trees in play on this one by the green. It's a good wooded green. Nope. Ooh, that was way too high. He was going for the turnover line, but got it a lot higher than he intended there. Uh, Alexis has thrown a lot of good shots this round, so we're all entitled to a bad shot every once in a while. Let's see if Cade can 
make the correction. He goes for the forehand line. Mm, that's going to be short of the hill, and that's going to be a tough elevated putt there. Yeah, there's a little ditch there that, that kind of lends to some awkward footing and, and angles for the putt. Liam going for the forehand as well. I like that angle, Pavo. Beautiful. Sit down now. Good drive. Great shot. NC State's had quite a few low-stress birdies in this one on this round, and that seems like another one. Steven going for the turnover line. Kind of similar mistake to Alexis. Not quite as high, but got way out to the right. Good thing his teammate is close. Hmm. Looks like Grant's framed up nicely. Ah. Oh. I thought that was in and out of my hand. So close. Just an inch high. Yeah, and if you can look at that flag, there's a definite headwind coming in on this putt. Oh, no. Yep, and there's that headwind showing its teeth again. You know, they say don't have the nose up to avoid that in a headwind, but when you're putting uphill from a ditch, it's kind of hard to not have your putt be nose up. Oh, no. Mm. Gosh. Thank goodness we're playing doubles. Yeah. Let's see, Gat. Let's see if uh, Zach can bang this one in. Good birdie. Good birdie. Way to capitalize on NC State. That was put in with some authority. It's got to feel good to get a stroke on a team that birdies almost every hole. That's uh, the second time this round, I believe, that NC State birdied a hole that Emporia did not. I've been very impressed by Emporia's play today. You can definitely see why they've done so well this season. Moving on to hole 16, 330 foot par three. The obvious difficulty on this is the big hazard bunker just short of the basket. It's probably no more than 10 feet from the basket there short right. Yeah, super close OB there and it's easy to go long, but once you do on that small, that low grass, you can slide further than you think too, trying to play it safe. Yeah, this is a, a good example of a hole that looks visually so straightforward and so simple, but with the fast ground behind the pin and the hazard bunker short of it, it's actually very difficult to get this close without a penalty stroke. Yeah, I mean, they were clearly a little tentative about that bunker. Both of those guys kind of went way long. So regardless of which lie they pick, they're going to be dealing with a putt right at that bunker. Let's see what Emporia State can do. That looks like a great shot from Grant. I like the way that's sliding in. Oh, a little short. Just barely short. And that's what the other team was afraid of there. That's It's so difficult to stick it close to this one without finding that bunker. Yeah, and as you'll notice too, Pavo, that's playing as hazard, so they might take that putt from there or there. Either one. It looks like they've pretty much got a tap in par guaranteed. And Steven laying it up, giving his teammate the green light to go for the birdie. Yeah, let's see if Liam can hit this putt. I think he's going to have to charge it up a good bit, though, with this distance. Oh, man, it looks so good from this angle. Yeah, it did. That was a great line. It looks like the wind died, too, a little bit on that putt as you see the flag calm down significantly. Yeah. Yep, easy tap in par there. And I believe this is the first hole since hole nine where neither team birdied. Wow, that's a great observation. This has been a, a birdie fest on this course, I'll say. Uh, the hot round, I believe, was 16 down at the end of the day on this course. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It's not the hardest course, and, and with this format, you expect to see a lot of birdies out here. I think we'll see more exciting teams play on the gorge, which is a much more punishing course. Yeah, punishing is a great word for it, and it's very, very uh, great for our team play. It uh, fits it well. Yes, I agree. Uh, and here we are on hole 17 of the boulders course par 4 569 downhill definitely reachable because of the downhill but once again uh hazard bunker very close to the pin also ob line down the left of the fairway yep very uh very beautiful view from this elevated tee and also very attackable hole
Steven puts a good move on that. It looks like he just didn't quite get as much turn as he wanted. Man, that was so close to being great if that had just turned a little bit more. Still safe. Should be an easy birdie from there, but let's see if they can get closer for an eagle look. Wow, look at that tree direction. <laughs> that was a good little kick there. Kept them in the fairway, but I still think they're going to be going with Steven's shot on that one. I think you're right, John. Let's go, Alexis. I want to see an eagle on this. Me too, Pavo. Me too. Put a good move on that. Keep holding. Wow, great shot. Oh, nice way to that. play the elevation. Wow, beautiful drive. Probably about a 40, 50 foot putt for Eagle there. Let's see if Cade can get him even closer. Cade going for the hyzer flip it looked like, but just a little too much hyzer out of the hand and that is fading left. Yeah, and seeing that flag moving like that, that's definitely a headwind off the tee. That makes Alexis's shot even that more impressive. Yeah, definitely. Gus giving it a little bid. That's going to actually be kind of a scary putt there. So hopefully Zach can put it a little closer. Yeah, hopefully. I want to say that's one of the first times we've seen the team play really come into play where one partner could get aggressive and the other one you knew was going to be able to play it safe. Yep. And here we go. Emporia State for an eagle. Oh, just bare. Oh, and that's in the hazard. So now... Grant's going to have to be a little more cautious running this because they don't want to both end up in the hazard. Oh, yeah, and he decides to take the medicine. That's too bad. I wanted to see the eagle, but that was a smart play from Grant. I can't fault him for it. Cannot fault him. That was a very smart play. And it is still a soft par four, so both teams are still walking away with birdies. Can't complain about a birdie. Although, to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind seeing this called a par three with the downhill. It seems pretty reachable. It would be a tough par three, but... Especially in the team's format. It seems a little bit easy as a par three. As a par four, excuse me. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that, Pava. We've definitely seen some eagles on this uh, hold on the first day. Another look at that drive from Alexis. Beautiful form. As we move on to the last hole, hole 18, 609 foot par four left to right. We've got a hazard bunker in the fairway there, as you see. Once again, OB, OB line down the left, just like on hole 17. And the basket is placed here on this slope and it is also elevated. So that leads to some tricky putting. Yeah, it does. And you'll notice on the last day of our, uh, or later in the week, this area gets absolutely filled up with spectators and it creates a nice little amphitheater for the players to finish their round in. So we see the players shaking hands and acknowledging the round together. And Gus threw that a lot straighter than he intended. There is an OB line there. I believe it stayed safe, but that's going to be a long upshot. So I'm sure he is hoping that Zach can get it a little closer than that. Oh, Zach looks like he going with, he's going with the roller. I like the play. This fairway shapes pretty well for a roller. Looks like that disc was a little too understable to get much distance, but he's out there in the middle. Yeah, definitely good footing on that one. That one's headed towards the bunker. Ooh, checks up safe just, just early at the bunker, just short. Nice. Grant going for the high turnover line. It looks like he early released it, didn't get the snap he was looking for, and that is fading out down the hill to, I don't know, hole one or two's fairway down there, which is out of bounds for this hole. But the first shot was fine, so they'll be all right. Well, Steven, that upshot was a little low into the hillside. That's going to be a long, tricky uphill putt. Hopefully Liam can put it a little closer.
Yeah, that's a little closer. Still not as close as they would like on this elevated basket. Yeah, and it's going to be a headwind putt. You almost would want to go a little long on this one to definitely give yourself that tailwind action. Yeah, for the tailwind and also with the hill kind of being more level with the basket. If you're long and, and higher up the hill, then you have a level putt instead of up or down hill. Ooh, Ooh, Alexis giving it a bid. He almost rang that one up, Pavo. And here's Gus. And as you can tell from the feather banners in the background on that last shot, the wind is gusting significantly now. Just a little low. I was actually surprised at the time that he didn't wait for that car to finish driving by. He, he putted at the exact moment that the car was directly in line with him in the basket. I guess he's better at tuning out distractions than I am. Oh man, another one just low. That's unfortunate. Yep, that's frustrating. I know that's not the way our number one ranked team would have liked to finish, but they shouldn't hang their head too low. They've had a, a valiant battle today. All right, here's Grant. See if Emporia State can get one final birdie. And they do it, bringing their round score to 14 under par. What an impressive round from Emporia State. It's been a pleasure to watch them play as a team. They've had great camaraderie, great energy. It's been an impressive performance. I agree. It's fun to film and fun to watch again and commentate now. Love to see the sportsmanship. Great handshakes around. And that wraps up our round one feature card of the team's event. Uh, thanks again for joining me, John. Why don't you talk about a little bit, talk a little bit about what we're going to see for the rest of the coverage here at this collegiate event. Yeah, so we're going to pick up next with our singles round. We're actually going to have Grant Yoder on that card from Emporia State. So make sure and check that out. That's going to be our singles round coming up next. And then at the end of the event, we'll see the uh, team's finals on Saturday. It'll be happening, so the coverage will be out on Sunday. And here we see the leaderboard for the teams. There's, 16 down, leading the way. Yep, Houghton coming in with that impressive 16 under. That was a hot round, and it was early in the day, too. So I think that set the tone for a lot of the teams. Cool. Thanks for joining us, guys. And join us tomorrow for round two singles coverage.